Welcome to Everything Money. We're glad you stopped by to visit us today. We do an eight pillar system analysis about looking at the financials of a company. A lot of people out there, especially if you're new invest investors, you might be looking at a stock ticker. We have other videos on how you're not buying a stock ticker hope, in hopes of it goes up. I mean, that's part of it, but you're also buying a company because there's things that you get by buying great companies beyond just a price going up or down. In this video, we're gonna talk about how we come up with our fair market value that we'd like to pay for a company and then compare it to the market cap of what the world thinks a company might be worth. And we do that by, by using our eight pillar system, especially looking at a company's free cash flow growth. We've done videos on free cash flow and why we think it's so important. It's obviously in our pillar system. And today we're gonna look at our pillar number eight, which is the price to free cash flow ratio. And my dear friend, Paul Gabriel is gonna go into that right now. Welcome, Paul, how are you? Good. When you're looking at free cash flow, I wanna multiply the free cash flow by a number to decide what I'm going to pay for that company. So as an example, if I know forever that a company is gonna generate $10 in free cash flow forever, and I say I'm gonna pay 10 times that, I'm gonna pay $100 for the company. Nice. Now, that $100 means every year I'm getting a 10% return on my investment, okay? Now, in the world of investing, it's not quite that simple. You have different levels of free cash flow, you have different growth, et cetera. I picked 20, as a starting point. Why 20? Over long periods of time, cash flow and earnings will be very similar. We look at a PE less than 20 on the most recent year. But with free cash flow, I wanna sit there and assign the same attribute, but then look at what makes up that five-year average. So an example, let's break this down. Let's say you have a company that's generating one, then two, <laughs> then three, then four, then $5 of free cash flow. Okay, what's the average here gonna be? Three. Three dollars. The average is three. So we do this a lot. We find our pillar number seven is the average free cash flow over the past five years. We come up with this number, which is three in this case. Correct. Now let me ask you another question. Let's say you have a company that's five dollars, four dollars, three dollars, ah. two dollars, and one dollar free cash flow. Same what's thing. the average? Yeah, same thing, Paul. Would you be willing to pay the same amount of money for these two cash flow streams? Well, they're both in the future, so how would I know? Are we looking back or looking forward? Assuming we're going forward, that this is gonna be the projection in the future. Okay. W which one do I wanna pay more well, for? Well, obviously I don't wanna pay the same for, well, uh, I, maybe you got me now, cause they're, I don't know. Let's maybe, talk about this. I was gonna say, maybe you got me. Cause you would always- you, Would you be willing to pay the same amount of money for both these? For the same free cash flow in the future. We've brought up a company like BlackBerry. BlackBerry looks a lot like the bottom, right. the bottom here, and you say that, even in a declining company, the money can be made. So you tell me, now I'm confused. So in a declining company, money can be made, but this decline here, and if you don't think the future is good prospect, to the same average, I would much rather buy this one for, for, for a much higher price. Why? This is increasing. If I think the prospects are going to the future, they're increasing. That's why I get so irate when people say, you don't care about growth. I absolutely care about growth. Here I am showing the exact same total free cash over the next five years, but I'm willing to pay way more for the one that's increasing with future prospects, okay? So here though, if it's increasing, I'm willing to pay a little premium because the last year was five, but the first year is one, the average is three. So when it's increasing, you should be willing to pay a higher premium because the average is going to increase over time. Does that make sense? Yep. I picked 20 as an arbitrary number. Now. If I paid 20 times free cash flow for this, I'm gonna pay 60 bucks. But if the same trend continues, the next five years will be six, seven, eight, nine, 10. The average is eight. Now I've made $8 on my $60 investment over the next five years in average, which is 13% return on my money, right? So this is part of why free cash flow as a multiple, it's gonna help you look at what you should pay for a company. Because at the end of the day, a company is only a company is valued at the present value of all free cash of all cash flows. Okay, I look at companies based on their total free cash flow and dividing it by the number of shares they're going to have. That's how I determine a value idea of the company. Now, is there more to it? Absolutely. But remember, with all of our eight pillars, not a single one of them will tell you whether to buy or not buy a company. You'll get them all together and determine if there's a reasonable likelihood to go forward. Now, I will say this: on the price of free cash flow. It is the one that'll probably stop me the soonest or get me interested even if the other numbers are not correct. As an example, that same company, $1, $2, $3, $4, $5, $10, $15, $20, $30, $40, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $200, $300, $400, $500, $600, $700, $800, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,
$3, $4, and then $5. If you said to me, Paul, you have to buy the company for 10,000 bucks, don't even talk to me. I'm just gonna disregard it. Why? Because the average is three, that's 3,300 times free cash flow. When I'm trying to get less than 20. For this company to be justified this price, you have to grow 10,000, maybe 5,000, but I don't know what the number is. They have to grow an insane amount of money every single year. That's probably not realistic. You're saying you'd like to pay, you know, the average free cash flow times 20, but when that number- Is insane, insane. I just disregard the company. I don't care and these if are there's companies, seven other checks. These are companies like? Um, Tesla. It's at a, what is it, like a thousand times free cash? I mean, let's pull it up. Let's pull up Tesla right now, and we'll pull up one of my favorites, Intel. Because I am an Intel uh, advocate right now. So we're going to pull up our Everything Money software. We're going to go to Intel first. So let's go to Intel first. It's right here. This is the last five years of free cash flow. 11.4, 11.76, 12.52, 18.2, 19.2. Now, here's the benefit of our software. Nice For growth. 80 cents yeah. a day, all you get is that you get this line added. No other free cash flow statement has this line. I add it here so you can get the number very quickly. And then it tells you the average. $15 billion a year, okay? And it's increasing. 11.4, 11.8, 12.5, 18.2, 19.2. Now, the company is currently selling for, let's actually look up here. We go to the eight pillar tab. It's currently selling for 15 times the average of the last five years free cash flow. This is nice. This is very nice, okay? So this is telling me, Paul, now is this a reasonable number or not? You know, I know a lot of investors, value investors who want single digit free cash flow numbers, but they're looking for smaller companies, I believe. And by all means, if Intel was ever in the single digits, I'd be buying it all day. Now that's single digit in the last year. The last year they did 19, they, last year they did 19 billion in free cash flow and their market cap was 230. So their last year average was 230 divided by 19. What is that, Seth? 10, 20, not 20, sorry, 10, 12. 12 times free cash flow. Yep, 12. Okay, that's pretty good for a company as big as, as Intel, in my opinion, and they're buying back shares. They bought back 14% of their shares in the last five years. I look at that going, okay, that's pretty solid. Now, let's look at a company like Tesla to get an example on Tesla. We'll go to the eight pillars tab. They don't even have a price to free cash flow multiple. Why is that? Because their free cash flow the last five years was negative on average. Let's go to the free cash flow statement and look at it. Cash flow statement, scroll down, capital up, cash from operations, less capital expenditures, negative 2 billion, negative 4.4, negative 38 million, a gain of 992 and a gain of 2.4. So it is increasing. Huge gain there, yeah. But an average loss. So what I would do in this company, I would disregard, <laughs> I would disregard these years. If I believe that Tesla's out of its cash flow negative situation, which it might be, I would project it based on these two. Okay, and I had to sit there and say, okay, Tesla has a lot more growth potential than Intel. So am I willing to pay a premium for free cash flow? Yes, but Tesla's also issuing more shares. But either way, assuming that it's exactly the same as Intel, Tesla has more potential than Intel, so I'm willing to pay a higher multiple. I'm not willing to pay more than Intel. I'm willing to pay a higher multiple of the free cash flow because there's a lot more growth potential in Tesla's free cash flow than in Intel's. So for all the people out there who say Paul doesn't care about growth, I just said I'm willing to pay more multiple of free cash flow for, for Tesla than Intel because Tesla has more growth potential than Intel. Just not a crazy amount more. The question is at what point, price? And with our stock analyzer tool, that'll be on our website soon, it'll allow you to analyze a, D, a company based on a discounted free cash flow method. And from that standpoint, you can choose the assumptions of how much uh, the cash flow will grow over the coming years. And it'll tell you what you should pay for it to get your desired return. The goal of this is we want to get you that what we think is a desired market cap we want to pay using this price of free cash flow or pillar number eight. We then compare that to the actual market cap. And a lot of times when we bring in all the other eight pillars, we can make a determination if we're interested in looking more in a stock, maybe pulling up the 10K, then using some more, some, then getting in the Patreon, getting our Discord and seeing what price we're like liking this. Paul, you don't often give, um, you seem so disciplined in your, in your buying. These eight pillars allow you to, to clearly see the fundamentals of company. Why, just in general nowadays, I mean, this is uh, May, May 2021, why are we buying so little companies? Or why should someone viewing this? Because be the market's this expensive. Everybody looks at stocks as an easy way to make money. The market's doubled in the last year since the COVID collapse. It's higher than it previous high was. So everybody thinks, oh, I just buy stocks, they go up. 
at some point, the fundamentals will matter more and the eight pillars will do a lot better in terms of giving you the guidance you need. And I personally believe that the, one of the most important ones, if not the most important one, is this price to free cash flow multiple right here. This is the one that drives me going further or not, okay? Now with Tesla, if this was a more mature company with not a lot of growth potential and it had this X, I'm disregarding it. With Tesla, I'm like, okay, well, let's go see how bad they're free. And I saw, okay, their free cash flow actually got better over the last five years. It's just average negative. So I'm gonna throw out the negative years because they're probably in a free cash flow situation. The question becomes, how much do you wanna pay for that? Right now, Tesla's selling for 600 billion. And last year they did 2.5 billion in free cash flow. That is a 250, $240 million, 240 times free cash flow. It's a lot more than 20. Yeah, it's not more than 12, which Intel's selling at. So you might sit there and say, well, you have a lot more potential. Yeah, but they've got to grow 20 times more. They've got to, grow, they've got to get to 20 times more free cash flow to even justify that level. So the question becomes, do you think Tesla will get to 50 billion free cash flow? And even if you do, why are you paying them that value today? Yeah. That's the question you have to ask yourself. That's our take on price to free cash flow. We, uh, we appreciate you guys watching. There's a whole, we've done a whole series uh, of what each pillar we use and why we use it. And if you're interested in learning more about this, you can click the link in the description below to join our Patreon, 2,800 members, 2,900 members, strong yep, call, 2, absolutely incredible. We have one of the largest subscriber to Patreon percentages. What am I trying to say here, Paul? Um, the, 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 we have, now remember, it's because we have our software, yeah. but in terms of the number of subscribers we have on our channel and the number of patrons we have, the percentage of people who are patrons is a huge, I would argue it's probably, Probably the best one out there. I mean, it's astronomical more than other financial channels out there. It's because we deliver so much for you. The, the, the exclusive the software. content, the software. You actually get something. You're not supporting us. We all One in 14 people who subscribe to our channel join our Patreon. It's incredible. Yes. So yeah, uh, tickle the thumbs up. Follow along. Thanks for your support. And we, you know, patrons, I love you. See you around, guys.